How you doing? Brent here with lift sliders and docks. We've got our foam float strips. We're going to show you how we can move a lift, we can balance a lift, we can adjust the legs if we have to. This particular one, we're going to be floating it out and around uh, to get access to get on a trailer. But right now, we got to pry it up in the muck just for the sake of the video time. We used our old steel dock pipes with an auger on it to get down because this one had sunk right to the frame in the muck. So it wasn't possible to get the strips under to start. Found the lightest weight corner. Uh, one was kind of sitting on top, the rest had really sunk. So this is a way you can level them, you can install them with this principle, remove them, move them if your water level is fluctuating up and down, have to go in and out. Uh, these can help you level the lift just by popping them back under if you have to do mid-season adjustments or if it does sink. Um, if you can't get the floats all the way under this bottom spreader bar and you can't pry it with the poles, you got to be gentle. Sometimes you got enough force or if you're using our boat lift crane, Sometimes it can be so stuck like a Chinese finger trap in the muck with the foot pad that you can actually break the lift or um, you know, potentially get hurt if something snaps. But anyway, if that was the case, next thing we do, crank this cradle down, get enough of a gap between the cradle and the bottom spreader bar, put a rope or a chain or a ratchet strap around it, we'd start feeding our, our strips into there until it would start to pop. Constant steady pressure is how you defeat the muck and that Chinese finger trap kind of hold on it. Usually the harder you pull, the, the worse it gets stuck. But just the constant steady pressure, and if you walk around the feet, it can help get air in there, release the suction on it as well. So if that was the case, lower that down, chain it, go into there. The only downside of that is you can't get a shell up towards shore uh, as you would be underneath it. So as it starts to pop up, then we just start going underneath the spreader bar kind of one at a time. So just for the sake of this video time, we're gonna show you quick I've already got it released over there. I'm going to show you how I, I jump on it to shove them sideways and keep adding them and uh, show you how, especially if you're going to be leveling it and you're installing it in the spring or just doing your adjustments, if you get it kind of neutrally buoyant, it's pretty close right now, you can actually jump on the lift, get it kind of sink. You might have to pop another strip or two out. You can check your leg adjustments if it's not level, jump off, you'll either come back up or you add your one or two back there. So. That's the way you can get away from using the crane or breaking your back or having seven friends try to help lift. Um, but anyway, now that we got this one up, um, I'm going to keep adding them up here because this one's still pretty tight down to the bottom of the lake. So I'm just going to kind of overload this side just because on this one it's pretty small and lightweight. So I'm not worried about it flipping with like a winch tube on one side. And it's a nice calm night, no waves. So instead of Trying to lift up on the hoist to get this under, that can actually make them shoot out worse. And if you're trying to use half pieces or whole pieces of the floats, that, that's when you can actually flip lifts. So the strips are the best in terms of balance, all this ease of adjustment, especially if you have a, a shore station or a, uh, a flow or anything else that has a hydraulic winch tube, especially, or even some of the larger you know, 5,000 cable lifts, it's all got that weight on one side. So they really want to tip. So the halves just don't really work, uh, even if you have a way to get it onto them. And most people don't so instead of lifting the hoist trying to shove that i'm going to hang on here i'm going to push down on the strip itself and kind of use all my weight and just keep shoving them and each one as you keep adding them it's just going to keep easy, getting easier these strips are sold in a set of seven which is one of our whole floats pretty much any lift whether it's canopy frame or not will take two sets those shore stations, the hydraulics, the shore mates, uh, a lot of the bigger lifts, especially with the electric motors, even 28 foot, 30 foot canopy frames can take anywhere up to three sets of it just on the balance, even if the weight isn't that much greater than some of the other brands that are similar features, uh, but just the different design and the balance of the weight. So, keep that in can be a one, two, three person job, makes it much, much easier. Same thing back here. We've got some of these on the dock side. If we were going to be launching this in the spring and installing it, those would be the first ones we'd take out just so we can get right up next to the dock. If you have plywood in the water like this one does uh, in some of the spots, it actually fell off some of them. If you're trying to get back on the wood, the strips are really nice versus trying to kick it off of your floats or if you're using inner tubes and it just drops where it drops, gets stuck, uh, then you're doing all that work just to try to shift it a foot or two or you can even have it tip into your dock on accident. So those would be the first ones to come out, but 
the winch corner is where it's always going to want to dip. Even a bare canopy frame is going to catch some wind. We got a really, really calm night tonight. We got lucky, but uh, once it starts tipping a little bit, that's when the floats are trying to get out of the water. They can shoot to the side and then it can kind of go on you. So having these on the side, especially because we're going out and around a bunch of docks into some deep water to an access point, uh, we're going to have a few there. Just to make sure, even if these do start shooting sideways across this horizontal bar, that we still have our two or three safety ones in that corner so it can't possibly dip down there easily. So keep going here. Again, not lifting. Actually putting a little more weight on it. This leg is still jammed on the muck. And we left that on purpose. I can show you this. So, a little more difficult in deeper water, obviously. And these floats are very, very buoyant. So you lose some weight capacity on the floats when we cut them into strips because the foam sticks in the air. But the upside of that is the balance. So as I keep inching this, that constant steady pressure is slowly releasing that muck. And we're just going to keep going here. And it's just about the top. That might shoot right up and out. More. And this lift will probably float with this once that muck's released, but because we're going around the corner, we're going to put the few spares anyway. Get the two full sets. So I kind of just walked my way up the float as I'm guiding that in, trying to not pinch my feet because there is a lot of pressure between there. In deep water, sometimes it's helpful to have somebody pushing on the rear so you can just focus on balance and feeding it under. here just about to release there it goes and so you see it's still leaning so now I'm gonna keep adding these you can see where it needs that extra balance you want it nice and stable on its own before you try to move it far just so it's less prone to tipping and flipping if they all of a sudden shoot to the side back in that box just a touch, a close. Keep adding. I may be able to get one down the sidebar and start shuffling it back. I just went about up to the middle of my shin right here off this plywood. A little deeper in the back. Point. Can't make it there with that plywood. There we are. We are floating. Got a lot of mud on this pad. Clean that off my hand. So again, these are sold in a set of seven. Need at least 14. They're just sold in the sets. Uh, a lot of them take somewhere closer to three sets. It just all depends, so. Better to have the extra buoyancy, especially if you're in shallower water, to get it pulled a little bit higher. There it goes. Again, at this heavy winch side, that's where we're gonna be loading it up. A little bit extra. Just to shuffle these around. So this shows nicely how if we had a big heavy winch tube on that side that we'd have to overload that one uh, and it just doesn't leave enough even if the weight is similar to some other designs so this one's pretty good i think we got a lot of muck on this back corner too we might be caught on the plywood still once we get them in the back car and sail inside that'll come There she is. 
100% on my own. Then if we're going up over a seawall, you can use our boatload crane to help lift it up. Get that crane on the inside, lift the front end up. You can shove it with some steel pipes. You can use the steel pipes as ramps. They're just basically giant pry bars. Once the front end of the lift falls up and over the wall, you just keep floating it as close as you can. With the rear, get your crane on there, lift that up, get your pipes under the spreader bar on top of the wall, shove with two or three people. So that's just a matter of simple leverage. Getting it under there, it's pretty harmless on the lift, the pipes, everything. Uh, we just use steel dock pipes with augers. And you can use that to cheat to your advantage with the leverage. Again, that's how we do that. Launching it, we just start popping them out. The last thing I do want to say is as you pop these out, we usually go from the inside of the lift out. They do want to curl back towards your face, so just be careful. They'll come up like that. Just put a hand on it, knock it away. Pay attention to these, because they can be halfway across the lake before you know it. You need to do a lot of swimming, so. Again, it's lift sliders and docks, Southwest Michigan. Our foam float strips, they're sold in a set of seven. Check us out online. Check out our other YouTube videos, like and subscribe. We're gonna show you, we got a little rock wall on some old cement, cinder blocks, a bunch of random stuff. Right now I'm sunk about up to my knee and my other foot uh, in the muck. And got this one on top of the lily pad roots. So we got a few things happening here. But we're gonna show you how we get up and over the wall uh, on my own with just a couple old steel dock pipes with the augers that actually sinks in a little bit less than the bare pipe end. Uh, gets a little bite. Um, got a boat lift crane. We got our 14 float strips here. Just floated this lift around. So just gonna show you going, uh, this is probably one of the tougher walls versus having a vertical concrete or steel wall where you can get right up to it and lift vertically. Cause now I have to get up and over and then up and over again. And it's gonna be catching on the back end in the feet here so show you the process got two poles kind of hidden up here i'm going to kind of grind on them basically with some sliders hopefully they'll help keep me out of a few little holes just on the bottom frame of the lift using these for giant pry bars as you'll see here a little bit sideways behind this foot so i can kind of steer it but anyway we just flow this around the corner we're taking this out up over this uh it's you know a couple feet of elevation three feet gonna start getting some of my floats out the closer I get on this front end I might transfer a few in the back to just get that float a little bit higher get up and over some of these lilies and uh, the rocks so again as you're taking these out usually go from the inside out push on with the foot there's not much pressure on it right now because it's kind of sitting on the ground but normally you want to push the top away so it doesn't pop you in the face just gonna transfer these back here and again, I'm doing this on my own just for the sake of showing how it can be done with the right tools and knowledge. But it'd be that much easier with a couple other people helping. Even if somebody's on shore kind of pulling on the front end or can get a pipe once that end is up, that'll help. So just going to surf these under, get that floating higher, see how close I can get. Jump it up over some of these rocks if I don't sink too far in. Kind of clip them a little bit at a time. And this is normally how to get a lift out of the yard. Same thing with two or three people getting a rhythm with the pipes. Uh, kind of a foot at a time, and you can even slide down the pipes. So, let's see here. Get this out of my way. We've got our boat lift crane tool here. So this really helps with the walls. Even if you have the strips to help level the lift, it's still beneficial when you have a wall. Sometimes it may be good to get this in here, lift it up a little bit and gently uh, control a fall forward. So you're getting up and over some of these rocks. Kind of the same thing as the pipes, just more vertical. If you had two or three people with the pipes here, one on the back, it would just be that much easier making sure one pad isn't going to catch in the rocks or anything as it goes. So, see if I can get another bump or two here. And I'll switch to that. So we've got the uh, winch corner here is the heaviest one. 
Turn that up and over, it's going to be this. And more important thing, that's not dipping in. There we go. That's where having that rear end floating still is really beneficial. As you can see with the leverage, just got one hand on this thing. So, really helps cheat. So again, I got that one up. I could skip the crane. I'm gonna show you here, just so you get a little concept of it. Get these out of the way. Sometimes you can even use these to help keep out of the uh, holes in the ground or to protect your concrete wall, especially as the lift is going up it. But in this case, I think they'd probably be in my way more than helping. So, then we've got our boat lift screen. Use all these techniques at your own risk, obviously. Get that under there. And just because of the weight balance, I'm judging a few things, but we got the winch, so I'm gonna cheat a little bit to this side. Plus that's the one I gotta lunge up and over further. So this underwater safe thing, you just hook that out with your foot. You want this post as close to that bottom bar as you can. It's almost dragging up it. Up because this end's floating, it's gonna walk on me a little bit. So be very careful never get anyone between the lift and dock or anything where you can get trapped. So again, I'm gonna use this as a controlled fall with it floating still. Pushing up, over, trying to get it to lunge up onto that wall. Make sure this doesn't whack me in the head. Got an auto brake winch. Back that off, find another point here. Now we're gonna go a little more centered so it's kind of even. And if you got a vertical steel wall, this is even easier because you can get right up next to the wall, get your front end, put our two above the wall, use our pipes on both corners. If you got two people, shove it onto the wall, keep cinching it up until the rear is as close to the wall as you can. Repeat the process in the rear. Good to go. So, okay, going up over. You gotta make sure the end is coming up like that. It's not gonna get whacked by that or any bunk brackets that are sharp or have it, you know, balancing on the post, jamming that there. So, you gotta be real careful. You got your extra people that help stabilize helps a lot so just for the sake of this video doing it on my own on purpose just to show you how it can be done break that out a little more Get a little extra height here floating backwards a little bit just about there Probably drag him in that corner, I think. Or more controlled fall here. Now I'm just gonna switch back to the pipes. Get this out of the way. These hooks hit that two inch framework, which is most of the lifts on the market. So again, using my pipes as levers, got a few here to grind on. Uh, even if you're not using all of them, sometimes it's nice to have others instead of trying to move that pipe just to keep bouncing with a fresh pipe wherever you need it. Just don't forget them. Normally we paint them bright orange so if they're down in the muck, uh, they don't disappear. But our paint wears off real fast. We use them a lot more than you're probably going to do it. So just going to get under here. Again, if you got a steel vertical wall, one person in each corner, maybe one in the back, you can lunge this forward. Back here so far. Now that's where I'm gonna 
Get my fresh one. Get in the rear. I might end up sinking right back to my knees here. Give it a shot. And the feet usually skid along on the grass decently when they're up and over. Right now it's still right on the edge of the wall. So it's just kind of a matter of going back and forth, having a few people. Got two people lifting in the front, one in the back, usually kind of go in harmony. A lot quicker, a lot easier. Few of these out of the way now. And every now and then, because the feet get hung up under some of these rocks and check it at uh, boulder edges, you may have to have two people push in the front. Sometimes the guy in the back actually push backwards. You get some elevation with it, and then the two people in the front overpower and kind of wrestle back and forth. But that way you're getting out from under the rocks, up and over it. Just kind of going. Let's see. Just because of this, the a little bit down further. I'm going to start here. If I can get that one out. And now I'm gonna lift up nice and high before I start shoving forward if I can. See, I'm up over the rock. I want to that. Sink in the muck again. pads around the grass it's going to slide a lot easier if you have wheels then it would help as well not necessary just over that edge now I'm going to go back to the crane lift up and shove forward hopefully that shows the main principles there Bunk brackets and everything, especially as it shifts and falls. When in doubt, hire professionals. Do this all at your own risk. On there, gonna have a controlled lift and then fall. Hopefully, get this post as close under there as I can. And normally, if I had other people, I'd be having them push on the front. And I can kind of steer it from the rear with this. And I'll slide that much easier. So, get a little shove here. Probably gonna be stuck. Yep, it's kind of a little bit. Let's see if I can get it this way. That's why you stay clear with your head. In this case, it's just gonna be better to keep going with the pipes. But uh, otherwise, that would be where you transfer over. And then you may be able to jack it up, especially if it had a vertical steel wall. Get the crane is tall, get your pipes under there so you don't break your back lifting to the height of the wall. Then just shove up and forward. So that's the main, main principle there. See if I can get this last little bit. I'm gonna have to go up front here. 
And that's where sometimes if you have enough elevation with the pipe, you can fill in some of the holes so it's not actually getting stuck. It'll just be grinding on the pole. Yep, I'm stuck here. Here. Three. Hopefully this will do it. Just a wrestling match. Getting the right amount of pull under there. Anyway, that's how it goes. Yeah, the cameraman will jump in on the front now, but that shows you the main way that we get it done. Now it's just a matter of getting in, in sync here and lunging it forward to run all the way up. So there you see how deep that muck drops off once I'm off the lily pad roots. Anyway. Yeah. All right, so we're back. We got another guy in here up on the front end. I'm gonna crane up from the rear. Get that elevation. I got two pipes here just in case the crane tips or if I need to jump on one side or the other. See if he can lift one in both hands. If not, he's gonna work back and forth. We'll just jockey it and deal with however it sticks. I'm just gonna spool this out. Get under there, get a little pressure. Get that post close, right up to the frame. All right, here we go. A little lift, a little push. Layer shifting. Cutting the cold ball again is what we want. It's going to help us. Now, we're probably going to grab the pull here. What we want to do is just go to the front and work it around. On top, nice and flat, good for the winter. This is safe, and you're all set. So, nice and easy. Again, lift sliders and docks. Thanks for watching.